Christian Livingstone here, and uh, in the background you may notice uh, the electric hand cycle. And if you've seen any of my video clips I've put out, uh, a lot of them revolve around this uh, project of mine. And uh, I just enjoy uh, the electric hand cycle, and I ride it not because I want to be different, but because it actually serves a, a highly functional purpose for me. And, it has a lot of facets to it. It's not just a pure function. There's also a, a kind of a social uh, aspect or element or facet to it. So uh, I dig it for a lot of reasons. Plus, you know, I enjoy uh, welding and fabrication. So uh, I enjoy building it as well. But not only that, uh, you know, I live here on the Great Plains of the North American continent. And I decided to move here primarily because a dear friend of mine, a, a guy named John Stewart of Jesus and his wife uh, lived in the, the area here. And uh, uh, we had been friends for many years, and uh, but kind of from afar. And uh, although I'd visited uh, him here and uh, elsewhere, uh, and uh, he even came to uh, uh, the hospital where I was at when I had a, uh, a nasty uh, uh, accident uh, about it. 10 or 12 years ago. But anyway, uh, my dear Christian brother friend, John Stewart of Jesus, lived in this area, and uh, he, like me, I don't know if he would consider himself a Christian anarchist, but I would. Uh, I'm a Christian anarchist. I consider myself a Christian anarchist. I, you know, don't have a social security number. I don't drive a vehicle with a, a state driver's license. I drive a vehicle, of course, and uh, but uh, not one that is uh, licensed and tax paid and all that stuff. And uh, that is a risk and it is, uh, it is an issue for us uh, Christian anarchists. And John, uh, you know, certainly would uh, consider himself a, a citizen of Christ's kingdom, a Christian uh, oriented uh, or a uh, kingdom oriented Christian like myself. I'm a Kingdom uh, Christian, a Christian anarchist, I'm comfortable with all of those terms, and it basically has to do with separating yourself from a hostile uh, environment, uh, an organization called the state. And uh, that doesn't make you a Christian, but uh, it is uh, an obvious, I think, marker for anyone who is led by the Holy Spirit to, to come out of darkness and into the light of Christ's kingdom, uh, you know, not pie in the sky when you die, or when a giant cube-shaped satellite uh, drops down uh, onto the earth with a, a dictator Christ uh, bossing everybody around. No. A lot of people have that view, but I don't. And uh, I think if you look closely at the Bible, it, uh, it doesn't either. And any of that stuff about another physical coming of Christ, uh, you know, had a, a nearness in its pro prophetic uh, dimensions. Uh, you know, in like uh, the Olivet Discourse, when Christ was saying all these things are going to happen before this generation passed, passed away. And, and, you know, they did happen, you know, in 70 AD when, uh, you know, old Jerusalem was completely destroyed right down to its foundation. So I, I'm not looking for, you know, future stuff. It's all right here. The kingdom's here now. And uh, all you got to do is get in step with it. And one of those steps is... Uh, uh, coming out of the rule of Satan, so to speak, separating yourself from obvious evil. And, uh, you know, the state is a coercive, violent organization. And, uh, you know, they give you very little choice but to either submit, participate, be obedient to it, or starve. And uh, the early Christians were, were willing to suffer those persecutions. And, some Christians today are willing to uh, suffer some, some difficulties, maybe not as bad as they, they were for the first 250 years, the, the body of Christ, uh, the church, the ecclesia. So anyway, this uh, all gets back to uh, John Stewart of Jesus and why I, I decided to move here and, and what the link is uh, with those uh, things with the electric hand cycle. Well, I'm going to tell you. John Stewart of Jesus had uh, a couple of really good things that he uh, was uh, establishing in this area, uh, I think, for you know, the body of Christ, or as a, 
as a model for uh, people who would uh, want to come out of the, the system, uh, of, of the world system, hostile world system. And those are two big issues uh, for us uh, in uh, uh, Christ's kingdom is the, uh, the travel issue and the labor issue. Now, the property tax issue is another one, but those are the two bigger ones, I think, is the, uh, the labor issue and the travel issue. And uh, John, uh, uh, even, you know, right up until he was into his 70s, uh, early 70s, was uh, uh, developed the skills of being a painter, a house painter, interior, exterior. And uh, he uh, invited uh, some young men, you know, primarily three brothers, uh, all uh, nearly 30 years old or so. And uh, they were interested to some degree in coming out of the system, not using a, a, a social security number to, you know, be extorted from. And uh, uh, John Stewart of Jesus enabled these men to find a way uh, through house painting in this area uh, to, you know, be able to live and to be outside the system for labor purposes. And so, uh, you know, that was a big one. Uh, you know, apparently in this area, the bureaucrats and and uh, revenue enforcers of the state, you know, don't really bug house painters too much because uh, this town has a lot of rundown uh, houses and, you know, they, they really, I think, don't want to bug the house painters because they'd rather see the houses uh, uh, improved. So anyway, John uh, uh, established a good uh, uh, reputation and rapport with the community uh, on his own when he was house painting. And then he invited these uh, uh, brothers and a couple others from time to time on and off. But uh, by and large, there was a crew and he always had work. And, uh, you know, he usually didn't make much money himself, but... Uh, he did it as a, a, a kind of a fatherly thing, a spiritual father to these uh, uh, younger uh, men who had families of their own, children, many children, some of them. And uh, so, you know, I dug that. I came out here and visited uh, uh, before I moved here, and I kind of got a little bit of the sense of uh, what was going on, on here. But another point uh, that John uh, established as a, a, a kind of a working model is that... Uh, the uh, travel issue, you know, John would generally not drive a vehicle because uh, he'd been jailed, uh, you know, for driving with uh, church-style documents, you know, like I have too. And, you know, he and I both, John and I both, had uh, an affiliation with the Embassy of Heaven. And, uh, you know, if you know my history, you know, I was even uh, on the staff of that organization, very small uh, family ministry, but still going, still very viable and uh, helpful. And uh, But the uh, travel issue is a tough one. You know, if you don't uh, bow down to Caesar, you know, Caesar will, will, you know, crush you pretty much. He'll take your stuff, put you in jail, and, uh, you know, if you don't go through all their paces, you know, you'll sit in jail and, you know, I have a tendency to fast in jail, and, you know, that can be dangerous. So anyway, John uh, set up uh, uh, an arrangement where he would ride his bicycle with a trailer on it to haul the paint equipment all over town. And, you know, he was just kind of a, a figure around town. People, you know, knew that, oh yeah, he, he paints houses and uh, has a trailer and pulls stuff around, and, and uh, the other men would show up on their bikes. So that there was no uh, problem with the hostile enforcers of the state on the movement while they're working. So, uh, you know, I dug that. I went to one of the jobs they were working on when I came here to visit just to see and verify for myself, okay, yeah, I get it, I get it. But now, you know, I was driving a car even though, you know, it wasn't uh, up to date or registered to me or anything like that. And after I moved here, uh, I continued to rely on it for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, the, the cars that I drive, I drive them with hand controls because of that, uh, you know, catastrophic accident I had. I, you know, I'm sitting in a wheelchair now and I can, I can walk uh, like a little old man with a couple of 
canes, but uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a real uh, deficit that I have when it comes to mobility in, in the upright position. So. What I did was uh, I began to build this and, and completed this uh, hand cycle, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so, and uh, I really dig it, you know. It's uh, electric powered, it's a, it's a three-wheel trike, what they call a, a delta-style trike. That's uh, uh, one wheel forward and two in the back. There's another style called a tadpole trike with two wheels in front and one in back. And, but for me, since I... Uh, uh, wanted to have uh, a hand cranking uh, ability as well, so I, I don't just rely on the electrics in case something uh, goes out or something. You know, I still can hand crank it, and the hand cranking uh, uh, gives me uh, exercise uh, too. So uh, you know, I, I do rely on the electrics a lot, but uh, the hand crank is, is very important to me too. So that is a, a somewhat. A, I followed pretty much the style that most other uh, uh, off-the-shelf uh, uh, production hand cycles do uh, in the arrangement of it up front. But I did uh, put a jack shaft because I wanted the chain, the upper section of the chain on the left side so I could put the cabling and, and have the chain so I can have one free clear side. But that's just a thing of mine. So. Uh, so John did. He established those two things, uh, how to make money without participating uh, in hostile extortion schemes of the city, state, county, or federal government. Bravo. Bravo. I get that. And I've done that. And, uh, you know, I haven't uh, been enrolled as a, a taxpayer uh, in any state or federal system since uh, 1995, 96, uh, yeah. And, uh, but the travel issue had still been an issue for people like John and still me. And uh, locally speaking in this area, he had pretty much overcome that with the bicycle thing. Now, you know, driving a car is not a prohibition for anybody in Christ's kingdom. It's perfectly viable, it's, it's okay. But, you know, the state makes it harder for us. And so, uh, you know, when we drive, we take a risk, and John would uh, drive, uh, oh, to visit his parents. His parents were still alive, right, up until their 90s, uh, until just a couple of years ago. But now the, the, the nasty thing that happened uh, here uh, about a year and a half ago, right about the time I was almost finished with the electric hand cycle, was that uh, uh, it was uh, determined that John had cancer. He very quickly died. Damn it! And uh, you know the the guys that were helping him uh, and, and doing some of the painting work they they really weren't big on painting themselves, and so you know they kind of went their own ways. And uh, you know that arrangement of painting houses pretty much fell apart. And uh, that's okay. You know it's just. Uh, it just is. But uh, there for a moment, it looked like uh, uh, John's uh, model in the Christian kingdom concept was, uh, was working. It was separate from the state. Uh, it was in the midst uh, of a hostile world, and it was functioning, you know, kind of feebly so, you know, but there it was. And so I decided to come out here and kind of join myself, and I kind of wanted to get in step and participate on the fringes of, of that uh, with the bikes and stuff uh, by developing the electric hand cycle. But, you know, it came a little late and uh, all that other stuff fell apart. But here I am, I, you know, most of those boys have moved out of town, and, uh, and but I'm still here and Mary, uh, John's uh, uh, widow, is still here. And so, uh, you know, it just... Uh, it just worked out uh, not as good as I hoped, but uh, I don't have any regrets about being here. But uh, meanwhile, uh, the electric hand cycle, it's, uh, it's in the winter now. It's February, about the middle of February, and there's uh, been a, a good deal of snow. And that's, you know, it's kind of rare for these parts. Uh, I've been out here about three winters now. This is the third winter, I believe. And, uh, and the way I've arranged this uh, hand cycle is that the one 
uh, left uh, rear wheel is the, the driven wheel by the uh, electric hub motor. It's laced into the wheel, and so I have one rear wheel that, uh, you know, I just hit the thumb throttle and uh, away I go. And uh, I'm considering, and actually it's just a matter of time, because I have another uh, rear wheel laced with another hub motor, I'm probably going to, uh, before too long, uh, have two wheel drive in the rear. You know, because I just want to see it done. I don't think anybody's ever done it on, on this arrangement. And, uh, and it especially makes me want to do it more because of the snow. You know, when I get out in the snow on this thing, it, it, you know, it's not too workable. You know, the tires I have, let me show you the tires and the whole arrangement a little closer. Let's see these tires. These tires are uh, not very aggressive, but uh, they are virtually flat proof. They're German tires called Schwalbe, and they're great. But uh, in the snow, not so much. There's my Christ Kingdom uh, license plate, of course. But here is the hub motor. And you can have these laced onto any wheel uh, for a bicycle. So, uh, you know, if anybody's uh, thinking, oh, wow, can you do that on a bike? You certainly can. But when I get in the snow, and I've already been in the snow on this, and, uh, you know, it uh, it's more difficult, and it depends exactly how much snow, but... Uh, But uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll hit the thumb throttle, which uh, drives the uh, rear outboard left side uh, wheel, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll sometimes have to hand crank with one hand, so it's like one and a half wheel drive, you know. So anyway, uh, I think uh, when the mailman comes, uh, I, I'm expecting some things. Uh, I don't know when it'll be here, pretty soon probably. But uh, uh, I have mounted on the uh, electric hand cycle that Mobius action cam up top there. And uh, you know, I've experimented and enjoyed having that thing out there. And so uh, while there's still some snow on the ground before it's melted, uh, I'll do that. I'll turn it on, I'll go down the uh, driveway and, and check the mail so you can see uh, what it's like uh, in snow. But uh, you know, I, I may change the tires, get some more aggressive tires. It's probably going to be too late for this season in the winter. You know, I, this is, this was probably it. There's not going to be a whole bunch of snow from here on out. But uh, for next season, I might get some more aggressive tires. There, there are other companies now that uh, have cheaper knockoff versions uh, of, like the Schwalbe tires. There's a Czechoslovakian company called... Uh, Kubina, they have a, a tire called Walrus that has the same uh, thorn-proof lining inside the tire. It's like a tire liner, but it's built into the tire, and so uh, it's like a Schwalbe, only about 20 bucks a tire cheaper, but more aggressive tread. So I might put some of those on it to uh, energize the other uh, uh, rear wheel and... Uh, Next next winter, boy, I'll be ready, because uh, you know I drive. I've got a four wheel drive truck out there, a import truck, and uh, you know I just took it to the store to go shopping uh, less than a week ago, and you know I usually drive the electric hand cycle into the store, and it's got you know the basket and the bin on it, and I load it up with groceries. Don't have to take them out, put it in a trunk or any any of that stuff, and you know the people in the store they like to see me on the bike, and when I was in there the other day. Uh, Somebody, some guy and his wife, hey, where's the bike, you know? So, uh, uh, I do, I, you know, if I can ride this, I will, you know, and there's very few things that really slow it down, but snow is one of them, so, you know, I'm working on kind of overcoming that little hurdle at, at those rare occasions, uh, at least in this area. I don't know how much longer I'll live in this, this area, but uh, yeah, most places there is a little snow, and it's 
always nice to, you know, have the ability to get through some unexpected thing like snow or mud or something. So anyway, I'm going to stop uh, talking uh, uh, now, and uh, I'll pick back up later after the mailman's coming in. You know, you can see me doing my uh, one and a half wheel drive. Uh, I've decided not to wait for the mailman, and I want to get out there and go down the driveway in the snow while while it's still there. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just take a little run out here for your edification and just for my fun. Doo -doo. That's my other project, that zero turn motor. It's all done. I've rebuilt the uh, drive system, but I'm waiting for a bigger, fatter belt, and that may arrive in the mail today. So that's why I left it out here in the snow. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, there's not a whole lot of snow left. <laughs> but yeah, I'll probably want to uh, lay on the uh, hand cranking for that little bit extra. So here I am at a standstill, and uh, see I'm spinning on the wheels. Throw the hand crank, that kind of gets me going. And I can kind of lay off it, just pay attention to it. Yeah, better tires would be a big help. Of course, another, another electric motor in the back, boy, oh boy, with, with uh, some more aggressive tires. Like a snowmobile. Wow, this is, this is kind of challenging, kind of fun. I know this terrain pretty well underneath, so... Do, do, do. Here comes my neighbor. I'm kind of waiting for him. He's checking the mail too. I'm pretty certain it hasn't come. Nah, he's not checking the mail, he's just backing in. Yeah, I'm gonna say hi to him. <laughs> 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 cycle. One and a half wheel drive.
Okay, there you have it, I think. What it's like to ride an electric hand cycle in one and a half wheel drive.